Hello, welcome back. We're on the backhoe project still. I guess this will be part two, March 30th, 2021. We got the head gasket set in and seals and stuff like that. So we took the head into the, the machine shop to get that valve looked at. And it's coming along. We're just buffing this stuff out and trying to get the rest of these studs out. My God, are they tough? I don't know. Some of them came out basically with the thing with your fingers, and the next ones are in tighter than the hobs of hell, I guess. So, yeah, and just I don't know if you have to take those out, but it just makes it a whole lot easier to buff that the top of the block off with your little buffer after with the moat, and it's probably better in the end. But yeah, we definitely determined that that, that uh, head gasket, it was blowing between these two here. You could see it was clearly burnt and it was a rough spot in there. So it blew in there, I don't know. So we're gonna open the basket, the rest of these studs out, hopefully, and clean them up. We took the rad in, it was leaking. Uh, we got it all cleaned up and the rad shop determined it needed to be recorded. so I actually thought the core looked pretty good didn't seem like it was rotting or anything but they said that the the rad looked like it had been froze once which kind of gives you a shock but um, we haven't seen any issues with the block and like I said it's not making or leaking any oil that way so and I maybe the rad froze once but the block didn't, I have no idea. Don't know the full history. It's like I said, the price was right on this thing. And it does what we need. So I'll keep you informed. Uh, I'd love to show you some process. But I have an old camera and I don't really have means to film while I'm taking this stuff out. But it's pretty straightforward. I know you guys, whoever's watching this probably understands. This is a... It's a stud remover. It works on a rack and pinion. So it fits, looks like anywhere from 5 8 to probably quarter inch bolts. So, and it works pretty well. It's old, just like everything I own. I guess I can try to get some video here of removing the studs. Like I said earlier, they, some are really easy and some are really tight in there. So, it actually looks when they put it back together that some of the holes had a bunch of oil in them. So, I don't know, a couple of them. This one here, I believe, nope, that's a water jacket. That one right there, and this one here, it looked like they had oil in behind them, and they were real prick to get out. There we go. This one here is already finger tight, so try our hardest to get this next one out. These ones here are all really tight uh, there we go that one went out pretty good so I like to see well, that one has oil in it too a little bit some of them actually seemed like they had pressure in behind them. I don't know. And I didn't see any cracks or anything, so I said I don't know why they have oil in them. But I guess it just what it is what it is. Maybe it seeped down through. Because when I noticed when it was running earlier, some of the out the bolt, the nuts, you could see air bubbles popping out through. So it's obviously coming from the head gasket and. I was wondering if it wasn't, maybe it wasn't sealing right all from the get-go. Probably because it never got buffed originally. And the oil seeped down in through the head gasket. Because this thing was leaking too, oil. But we'll see. Come on, you. Sometimes you get a little more leverage on there. With this, you can kind of maneuver it easier. At least I find, I don't know. Things look 
old, like I said, and wore just like this back wall. <laughs> Come on, you! There we go, you're grabbing. Get her out with a little, little one. Beauty. These back ones here, on this side, they're shorter than the other ones. I'll keep that in mind, I guess. And the threads on them, the side that goes in the block is the shorter threads, and the top part that goes through the head are the longer portion. But yeah, we got them all out there, so I should be able to buff this up nice and clean, and we'll. Uh, Put some of his gasket stuff on there and we'll uh, go from there. So I'll uh, buff it up. Come up pretty oh, nice. But I noticed a small detail that wasn't seen with all the dirt and stuff on there. Number two, besides the ring or piston, I should say valve issue. Uh, it looks like we got a sleeve issue. I don't know if it's going to be possible to see on the camera here. But we can see if we can try to look. Mm. There's a crack right in there. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to visually see it there. But from what we see... I've seen and we've looked over here it looks like it's headed off there in that direction right there and it goes about probably three quarters of an inch and what I'm guessing is it's starting to peel that top ring off where it seats in in the block on that sleeve so we've I guess decided that we're gonna go order a new sleeve and piston for it. Well, we got the, we we're thinking just the sleeve, but you know that piston's pretty well mangled as it is. Where that guy, the previous owner, did whatever to it. Um, but pleasantly, we were surprised by the price. It actually ended up with the sleeve and piston, and it comes with a set of rings and the wrist pin and all that. It was a hundred and ten Canadian dollars. So we weren't shocked. Or I mean a little shocked by how cheap that was, but that's a genuine Perkins replacement, I guess. So that's good. It's coming right from the dealership. And yeah, so got a little work cut out ahead of us. Now we gotta obviously drop the oil pan, which is on these things here. It's not as bad as like a regular tractor because these industrial tractors have this this frame in here that goes to the bell housing back into the front so now normally a tractor like this the oil pan is part of the frame look at that oily thing but yeah on this one this part here it's going to support the tractor. so we don't need any extra jacking on back here or obviously blocking the central pivot up here so it doesn't tip and just drop this oil pan and uh, go from there I guess get the, that piston out I'm pretty sure the other way I haven't seen anything else on the other ones they looked all right and like I said we don't want to spend a whole year working on this thing and put new parts in it for working 10 hours a year it's not really worth to rebuild the whole damn thing so yeah but this is going to be a, a job and a half i know they have ring puller or sleeve pullers for these when i was younger i helped do one with my grandfather and we made one up on the lathe with using a piece of pipe and turning the the bottom plug out 
just right on a lathe to do that and of course we don't have that tool we made up so we're probably gonna have to head over to the lathe again and make another one for this job and try to pull this out uh, and they are a prick if it's anything like the other ones I've done they're in there tight so keep you posted on the videos I'll make this the end of part two and we'll go into part uh, on unscheduled part three I guess we'll call it that and we'll get the thing all the oil pan and stuff like that taken off and hopefully we don't find any more surprises in the pan so but yeah that's just what I got at this point <laughs> other than that the head did buff up pretty nice and just yeah one step at a time anyway I hope you enjoy part two and like and subscribe all that and I'll keep making them okay have a good evening or night or whatever you get on that Bye. and we'll show you the progress on the backhoe I guess as you can see we got a piston out number three and it looks pretty good other than the fact that we are going to change it but it it didn't look damaged in any way which was good but we, we did get that cracked sleeve out didn't get it out in the conventional method like most mechanics would tell you how to do it I actually watched a video on this procedure and I think I mentioned in other parts of this video that I did pull these out when I was younger with an, the correct puller which is a, a metal plug that has a it's turned to the right size to go inside here and grab on the edge of the or the bottom of the sleeve which you can see is pretty freaking thin probably I don't know 30 thaw or less um, yeah but we use an unconventional method I've seen a video another farmer doing this exact job and I thought it was pretty easy and we tried it so per what it took or entailed was chipping out a small portion of the sleeve on the top of the where it seats in the block or the deck or whatever you want to call it used a I believe a chisel or a small punch I didn't actually do it my father started it I did the brick finished it because I was I was thinking I don't really like that idea and was contemplating whether to make a plug ourselves to pull it so I went out and got this an old ruler out of a spring a spring forming machine I guess but you can imagine how hard that is and by the time I came back with this idea my father had already started chipping it so and that's what we did I took after chipping it we started it with a bigger screwdriver peeling this out which it peeled out surprisingly well and if anyone else has seen the video on doing that it's exactly what he said it, it peels out nice and evenly it doesn't chip into little pieces it just comes out into one little chunk and it peels all the way down so you start it with a a bigger screwdriver ouch and then went with a big this smaller one here and just kept tapping it down until you had the full thing chipped away as you can see and it pulled right out of the bore no problem it was simple as heck uh, looked at the bearings on the rods here and like they aren't wore really at all there's a fine little mark in there well if it holds true and what the previous owner said he didn't really ever change any of this stuff and this thing's probably got over 12,000 hours on it so they obviously maintained it fairly well because that bearing it's got lots of life left in it I, I at least I would say I've seen them a lot worse than that so yeah here's the board looks like um, it can't look really a little wee mark maybe there it's all we did on the, the deck but it, it seats on the edge of the, the sleeve anyway when you're torquing your head down so 
I'm not too worried about that. I know some guys will be flapping their arms in the breeze because we did that that way, but there are ways of doing. I guess what they say is you you work smart, not harder. And if if it's wrong, then it's wrong. But I think <laughs> I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Probably last another, probably last the rest of this backhoe's life because probably the next step after we own it will probably be to China or something like that in the scrap bin. So you know that's what happens to this old stuff. Not a lot of guys want to fix it anymore. But always seen the need to do this. Uh, the oil pan we got off obviously to get that piston out, and that was a flipping nightmare. I I can't stress that enough, especially on this thing. It uh, because of all obviously the grease accumulation and stuff like that. There were bolts and stuff and things that weren't really spotted that well and we thought we had all the bolts out we went as per the man repair manual which is a third party repair manual it's not an official massey one and didn't realize there were extra bolts around the front main there i got two of them out and apparently there were two more so you live you learn and we broke a piece of the gear train seal housing i guess right there Stupid bag keeps flipping around. It's kind of breezy out. The uh, I don't know where we're gonna find one of these things, but the way it broke and the way it fits back on, I think that's a good candidate for the JB Weld type epoxy. Once again, we have some more guys probably flapping their arms in the breeze about how you shouldn't repair it that way. But you live, you learn, and you. You do things at will if you need if need be type thing. The piece is right here, so <sighs> and look at how it fits in there. It's basically like a glove, it didn't chip anything else out but crack away, and I think that epoxy it's gonna seal it up quite well. And that doesn't really it's not any integrity to the oil pan itself it's just essentially a seal it, it's the integrity is in these bolts along here and that's just the seal so it should it should seal up fine and I know how strong that epoxy is used it on other things obviously everyone else who's used it understands what it does it'll handle the heat at least that bit of heat from this and I don't think we're gonna have a problem with it but other than that I don't know other than going to wrecking yards and stuff like that, where the heck are you going to source one of these? It probably They probably do make new ones, I'd assume, because there's literally millions of these engines engines left in the world. So, But I don't know. But that's what we're going to do. And we're hoping to get that stuff in next week, the pistons and the head and all that fun stuff and hopefully we can put this back together uh, the sleeve is definitely going to be tough to get back in I know even when you you freeze them put them in the freezer or uh, put them in what is it dry ice that's it they still go in really tight and the professional guys aren't going to like the way we try to put this sleeve in that's for sure they'd use a press and you know hydraulically shove it in there but I think we're gonna manually tap it in there put a board across like like you always did you know tap 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 and it'll go in but it's still gonna be tight and yeah we won't be putting Loctite on it I know a lot of guys will be saying that too you gotta put that Loctite on there but never did that in the past never had a problem so I don't think they else to note Except this part, of course. Hmm. That's what you always need when you're doing a project like this. <laughs> Over and out.